Hey, good morning, it's Monday, and today we're gonna to begin in James chapter five. Now, let me just set context for you. James chapter five covers kind of some miscellaneous topics. He's doing some final housekeeping um, prior to ending his epistle to a collection of churches who are scattered, and he wants to address something, not the first time, but he wants to revisit something uh, when it comes to material wealth. Now, you have to understand, there was no middle class in the first century. So there were rich people and then there were poor people. Uh, so the middle class did not exist unlike today. Now, the second thing that you need to understand, our culture today, by standards according to much of the world, we live in abundance and comfort. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. This is not a daily dose. We're trying to like, you know, like be down on that. However, as you know, and what we teach here in the Bible, um, God's the owner and we're the stewards. And so we want to steward well what God has given us. So let me read the first three verses. I'll draw a comment out and then we'll kind of revisit this tomorrow. This is what James says. He says, now listen, you rich people, which means now listen, Pathways. Now listen, Adam. Now listen, like we're considered rich, okay? Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Verse three, our gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion, catch this, will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. All right, so what's James saying here? He's saying essentially this, that because the sin of hoarding, the sin of accumulating, the sin of amassing things, we have so much in our abundance, he's saying to these rich Christians in the first century, that actually the moths and the corrosion and the decay of their things testify against them and testify against specifically the sin of selfishness. They were self-absorbed in their material possessions. In other words, they didn't own their stuff. Their stuff owned them. This is a scary thing for me, at least. I don't want my stuff to own me. I want God to own my heart and my life. And I want to have my stuff in its proper perspective. I want to steward it in such a way that God can use me and my life. And I think you want the same thing. So here's, here's the deal. James says this at the uh, end of verse three. He says, um, you've actually, you, you've, you've miscalculated how you're thinking about your, stel- your stuff, especially in the last days, okay? He's saying like, live with a sense of eternity in your mind's eye. Don't get stuck in the temporal with all your stuff. We'll we'll come back tomorrow and we're going to um, think through this and some of the implications for today. So today I want you to hit this week and I want you to think about who owns what in your life. Do you own your stuff or does your stuff own you? And how much time and attention and energy are you giving toward your stuff? All right, love you, praying for you, and I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Dose.